Hello, Startup Conference. All right, Hi. so sitting next to me, I have Ali Zada. He's a co-founder of Chariot. Uh, you might have seen them driving around. It's uh, one of these personal mobility uh, startups that uh, is all about getting people around. You have Chariot, you have the go bikes that you see all over. Um, so let's start with the obvious question. What the fuck is going on with all these scooters? Yeah. What do you guys oh expect, God. Anderson Cooper? Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the scooters, really interesting. Um, I was, uh, I happened to be in Santa Monica six months ago, and I uh, rode one of the first birds. Uh, and so you, you know, know the problem. On the beach in Ocean Avenue, and it's 80 degrees, it's a wonderful experience. And, and I rode them here, and it's, uh, it's great as well. Um, I, I think the scooters, the bike shares, uh, these are uh, incredible first and last mile. Uh, solutions, especially the uh, uh, the scooters, and first and last mile meaning, uh, how do you accomplish um, the uh, beginning or the end of your commute when you're trying to get to or get from something like uh, a ferry terminal or a BART station or a Caltrain station or, or a bus terminal? Um, too often is the case where uh, uh, people don't take mass transit uh, because uh, that last mile or that last half a mile uh, is really the conundrum to get to their destination, whether it's office or home. Uh, so they end up jumping in a car, being a single occupancy uh, driver, or, or jumping in an expensive Uber. Is, is walking that big of a problem? It's a Does problem. It have to be disruptive? I'll tell you what, it's a problem if it's uh, 25 minutes, if it's a mile long. Uh, Chariot launched in Austin as our second, uh, second market. And Aust have you ever been in Austin in the summer? It's, uh, it's, it's 95 degrees, and, and um, uh, it, it can be an issue if you're wearing high heels. Uh, I don't wear high heels, but I, I think half the population sometimes wear high, high heels. Um, and, and so there's um, uh, walking is an issue uh, if, if, if it's too far. OK, all right. So the scooters That's have done a really good uh, job. And listen, I think um, with all the hubbub with uh, you know parking and uh, driving on driving these scooters on the uh, on the sidewalks, I, I think that's very temporary, and that'll get sorted out. People, uh, just like the first cars, will figure out how to behave with them, how to drive them, how to be responsible with them. Um, I don't think you'll ever get a, to a case where people are wearing helmets. Uh, I think that's kind of wishful thinking, uh, but I think it'll be great when you see people actually riding them on the street on bike lanes. And, uh, and setting them aside towards the side of the sidewalk. Now the government here is trying to rein them in and it's struggling. And we only have a limited amount. Now they raise $500 million or something like that. They're about to raise a lot of money. Yeah. So we're gonna see a lot more of these. What makes you so confident that people are gonna understand that they should be riding them in the bike lane? Is it gonna take people getting ticketed? What's gonna do it? I mean, I ride on the bike lane because for two reasons, uh, or on the street, or the bike lane. Um, I ride them on the street if it's not a bike lane. Uh, because number one, I don't want to like hit anyone uh, and, and get a lawsuit. Uh, and number two, um, it's faster on the street. Why would you want to uh, duck and weave between people on the sidewalk? So um, it's a physics issue. So I think that'll sort itself out. Uh, I do think you're going to have this fundraising war between uh, Chinese and American uh, uh, scooter companies, just like you've seen in bike sharing between Ofo, Mobike, Motivate, all these companies. Uh, so it'll be, it'll be really interesting. I think they'll run in parallel with the bike shares, and I think you'll see a lot of these scooter and bike share companies merging uh, together, and then I'll see, I think you'll see them merging with ride sharing, microtransit, and eventually automotive and mobility companies as well. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty fascinating. What do you guys think? We should just do a half hour on scooters? <laughs> we could go. Oh, another well, thing on scooters. I okay, was thinking great. Thinking the other day, um, scooters are interesting because we should I we should have renamed this thing just yeah. deep thoughts. No, on we scooters. can talk about other stuff. But yeah. um, uh, scooters are interesting because I think they're cheap enough that if I'm riding a scooter twice a day, how much do they cost, by the way? I don't know. I should have I, I should have checked. Wait, that's if a way, anyone, way to back uh, it up. Does anyone know how much they cost? Open app and uh, check uh, how much. Uh, Fifteen cents a an minute. An e-scooter is on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Eighty bucks, hundred bucks. Okay. So I think if why would you use the scooter service twice a day if you're using it as a power user? Um, why not just buy an e-scooter? You can't do that mm -hmm. with an electric bike. Those are pretty 
those are very expensive. And a car, you can't do that. But, um, well, some people do, unfortunately. But um, with an e-scooter, if you're, if you're riding it two, three times a day, just buy your own. So that may be a very interesting threat to these on-demand scooter services. They become so popular, people just end up buying it themselves. Yeah, they can become a victim of their own success. Yes. Okay, so well, let's move on from scooters, but we'll use them as a jumping off point to the rest of the discussion, which is right now we're in this moment where we're seeing all these types of transportation come up. We're seeing the scooters, we're seeing Uber and Lyft, we're seeing like the go bikes, which are owned by Ford. Well, here they're owned by Ford, which is a company that you sold to, and then we're seeing Chariot. So what's, what about this moment is creating such demand for these alternative transportation systems, whereas before you would either walk take a traditional mm. taxi service, drive, or public transport. And it seems like all the energy is everywhere but those areas right now. Yeah. So, so I think, um, I think what hap what's happened over the last seven or eight years with ride sharing, microtransit, scooters, e-bikes, um, and the like is uh, uh, there's this reurbanization of America and certainly the world. Um, so all these people are rushing into the cities. Uh, it started here, and then I, I just came back from China. It's certainly uh, accelerating there. And um, so public mass transit hasn't kept up. And so when that happens, because uh, they have a monopoly, and when that happens, uh, people will start to look for substitutes. Taxis didn't keep up. So that Uber and Lyft you know, sprouted here in San Francisco uh, six, seven years ago. Um, so and, and public mass transit or, the, or public infrastructure is not solved the first and last mile with you know, smart shuttles or anything like that, um, so uh, for the most part. So that's where e-bikes and e-scooters come up. So, um, so you have this reurbanization trend, you have um, uh, you know, public mass transit hasn't been able to keep up with that. Um, and you also have this uh, physics problem, which I keep bringing up, um, where uh, there's just too many cars uh, on the street for a fixed supply of street and curbside. So uh, people are just fed up with actually owning cars. People are now fed up with driving. And I actually think um, Uber's reportedly $100 million purchase of Jump was, uh, Jump Bikes was probably the best $100 million they have or will ever spend because it effectively acts as a hedge for uh, Uber, for people like me, I'm a perfect use case where uh, instead of taking a $10 Uber ride, I now use Jump almost every day. Tell, tell everybody a little bit about what Jump is. So and what Jump the Bikes is. is this New York based startup. They, they started a few years ago and uh, there are these, it's the first, I think, first electric assisted dockless bike, okay? Uh, dockless. So you can park them anywhere. You can park them anywhere. You gotta park it against the pole. It comes with a ver very you know, sturdy lock that you can take out and you can put it, and you don't have to carry your own lock. Um, again, I don't, I don't, I don't wear a, a helmet, but um, it's, it's great. Um, so they're dockless, they're e-assisted, so in San Francisco you can climb the tallest of hills in Knob Hill and, and get by, and so um, I barely use ride sharing anymore, and I'm using this jump bike once or twice a day, and it's the difference between $2 for half an hour versus $10, and so I'm saving 80%, um, and so now Uber is going down the value chain and, uh, and acquired this bike, and a lot of people are kind of doing what I, this is not to me, meant to be a, a commercial for Jump, but I think a lot of, um, and I think the next incarnation actually is gonna be, uh, you know, there are couples walking, and instead of taking a ride sharing, um, we're going to have taking a taxi, duo bikes. Yes. Oh, Lord Almighty. Maybe not the tandem bikes like yeah. you saw from the 80s or like you get from Blazing Saddles. <laughs> the those street are, just gets more and more daunting those every are a little, day. Yeah, those are a little, daunt, those are a little corny, but uh, perhaps it's a bike with a sidecar. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it's some... Um, but who gets to be Batman and who's Robin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you could take turns. I know. You know to and fro. We're going to have another uh, point of relationship but issues. But I, I, I think um, one of the scooter or the bike companies is going to make a dual, dual passenger vehicle of some sort. And I think you'll see that uh, in the next 12 months. You heard it here first. Yes. So also, I'm like, you know, you mentioned you don't use a helmet. It's interesting. I'm, I'm surprised there aren't more deaths on these things. Like, City Bike has had one death in New York in really? four or five years. Wow. I don't think there's been one in San Francisco. 
Yeah. Are people just more careful when they're using these things? What's I going on? I think drivers are. By the way, you should wear a helmet. I, so. I, I will. I'll, 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 if there's I'll, I'll one good thing that it. comes out of this discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe someone will donate a helmet to me. Yeah. Uh, I, um, I, uh, I, I think that uh, a lot of drivers, both commercial and private operators of, of vehicles, um, now that bike lanes are ubiquitous from New York to San Francisco and I've been to some Midwest cities like Kansas City and they have bike lanes, it's, it's remarkable. Um, they're ubiquitous now so people are very, and they're brightly colored and painted and uh, I think, um, uh, I know chariot drivers now take a training course on it and we take it very seriously. Um, so uh, it's just, you know, it's just knowledge and, and, and awareness. So that's a good thing. Okay, so we've done, we were planning to do the short term, the medium term, the long term of transport. I think we've done a good job on the short term. So I'd actually like to hear from you what you think transport's gonna look like 10 years from now, where I'd imagine we're gonna have some of these solutions that are really gonna take hold. We're gonna have autonomous driving coming about. What does transport look like in 10 years? Yeah, so um, coming back to the physics problem, I think, uh, uh, the government, municipalities are finally going to say enough is enough. We can't jam all of these cars, both commercial and privately operated, uh, onto the bridge, onto the highway, onto the street at the same time. So um, there is going to be some elegant digital solutions to regulate uh, and prohibit and uh, uh, exercise restraint on how many uh, cars uh, can be on the road, uh, whether they are private, whether they are manual or autonomous. Is it mostly autonomous? Um, uh, it, yeah, it'll be mostly autonomous. I, I, I think um, in 10 years, cars, manual cars are going to be for collectors. So, so who wins? You know, you sold I'll your tell company you, I'll before. tell you who's going to win. So everyone's yeah. talking about like the autonomous vehicle manufacturers, Who's going to win? Is it Waymo, Tesla, Ford, GM? And don't tell me everyone. No, no, no. Okay. no uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know that. I don't know how many winners there are going to be on the on the manufacturing side. Um, and that's fair to evaluate. And there's going to be a good amount of money in that. But what no one is talking about, or or what is being drowned out in all of the uh, vehicle discussion, is on the infrastructure side. So what is, what is the city and what technologies are the, city, are the cities going to adopt, employ, buy from technology vendors um, that is going to regulate and network all of these disparate vehicles and manufacturers? So you're gonna have ride sharing, micro transit, you're gonna have on-demand deliveries, UPS, FedEx, DHL. You're going to have all these actors, and um, I think one of the, I think the next trillion-dollar company is going to be that infrastructure company. It, the company may already exist. It could be Siemens, Bosch, Google, Ford. Um, is going to be that that player that creates this uh, this uh, this technology where all the network operators can speak with each other and speak to the city and allows the city to regulate flow and, and all this good stuff. So um, that's not that's what no one's really talking about. I think there's a lot of grand schemes that are being uh, developed by the big companies. Um, but um, if you're a startup founder out there interested in mobility, I think that biting off a small piece of that infrastructure play uh, could be uh, a, a, a very worthwhile and rewarding endeavor. That's what always happens. You have these cool companies, the big flashy ones, the Uber, the Lyft, and then it's the back-end SaaS play that's the one that ends up. It's like you, you have all these marketing companies, all these sales companies, but Salesforce is going to be the one that's worth the most, so yeah. maybe it's the same thing. But, but, um, Go boring. But, but those big companies, the bigger they get, even the super really well-run ones like Google and Amazon, um, even those companies, um, they can't innovate everything. Uh, they, their rate of uh, acceleration of innovation goes down, which is why startups exist in the first place, um, because uh, they, can, uh, they can think faster, they can move faster, um, and, 
and, and, and so there's a lot of, you don't need to be a, a multi-billion dollar car manufacturer to be part of the future of mobility. Okay, great. Let's talk about one of those fast, nimble companies, Ford, which you have a very interesting look into because you sold to them. So they're making investments in self-driving and in chariot and in the bikes that we see all over San Francisco. Do they get it or are they just throwing darts at a dartboard hoping that they're going to hit the bullseye without much yeah, practice? You're, tr you're trying to get me in trouble, Alex. Um, no, Ford, Ford gets it. Um, they had a, uh, a new CEO come in, Jim Hackett, who... Uh, um, Talks who, a good game. He, um, he was the executive responsible for, for purchasing my company, so I, um, obviously he's very smart. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, he, um, he deserves a lot of credit in the 70s or 80s for rethinking the uh, office workplace uh, when he took over at Steelcase in, uh, in Michigan. And, uh, you know, I think they're the, one of the world's largest uh, you wouldn't call them an office furniture manufacturer, you would call them an office solutions provider. And if you ever have a chance to be in Western Michigan, um, go to Grand Rapids, uh, Steelcase is ubiquitous there, and uh, they have this like public showroom of the workplace of the future, and it's really, really cool. So um, in the early days, uh, Jim started working with this um, design lab called IDO, which is right here in Palo Alto. Uh, IDEO became famous for uh, collaborating with Steve Jobs on a number of design things like creating a mouse. Um, and, uh, and, and I think Jim still uses them today. And uh, so Jim is very design forward thinking. Um, I think he has a humongous job on his hands. Uh, Ford is a 200,000 person company and uh, they make 99.9% .9 of their money um, uh, uh, selling cars, um, not including Ford Credit. Um, and so he's got this big, big ship to steer, and, uh, but I think they've made some smart acquisitions after, after Chariot, and uh, I think they have, the right, they have the right attitude, and it's all about execution. Yeah, I mean, point. that's the thing that fascinates me about this whole space, is you have these big, old-school car manufacturers like Ford. You have the networks that are being put in place on top of the way that we interact with cars like Uber and Lyft, and then you have all the companies that are working to make autonomous technology, like yep. Google and um, you know, the set of companies doing that. So it's very interesting to see, and I almost think that the auto manufacturers like Ford are gonna end up being in the worst position, because when you end up ordering a car with an app and the car drives itself, the car ends up becoming a commodity. Yep. So, I it's mean. The, it's the Nokia you, problem. You have to acquire to stay relevant, but it's just very interesting. How do you think Ford is gonna get past that issue? So they're going to continue with uh, making uh, smart investments, acquiring startups where uh, they feel they can add value, um, diverting resources. Don't, don't discount a company with $27 billion of cash. On well, they, they, at least they know the problem, right? They know the they're problem. Not, they're not like a newspaper, for instance, was yeah. like the internet sucks, yeah. Yeah, and, and then you, they all died. But yeah. like Ford knows what it's dealing with, so that's... They do, they, they, they know what's on the horizon. They are working um, furiously to not be the next Nokia. They, um, you know, the guy at the top, Bill Ford, the chairman, um, he gave a 2011 TED talk that you can check out on YouTube. Yeah, it's um, a pretty smart talk. Yeah, very forward thinking. And um, yeah, this is a guy that in the 90s, um, the board wouldn't allow him to and his name's on the, on the building. They mm -hmm. wouldn't allow him to do bike sharing. They wouldn't allow him to do um, electric vehicles. Yeah, they should have listened to him because in that they TED talk, listened to him. he had an idea, he had an idea. Yeah. What's, what's it, um, Jim Ford? What's the guy's name? Um, Bill Ford. Bill Ford. Yeah, he had I this idea of generic. pressing a button on your smartphone. Yeah, so he had this idea in this TED talk, press the button in the yeah. smartphone, yeah. the car comes, takes you where you need to go. Yeah, and that same year, Uber raised yeah. their series Yeah, exactly, so. so. They were on it, they, they just weren't really got, on it. They, they've got the right attitude, they've got the right people in place, now they just, now they gotta hustle. Now how did you, let's say, I'm gonna ask them one more question then we'll go to Q&A. How did you come up with this idea uh, for Cherry? It, it, I mean, it's very interesting, it's like, okay, actually there's this famous tweet about any, we got five minutes, there's this famous tweet about any time you see a startup uh, that focus on transport where like they say we're focusing on transport and then someone t quotes tweets them and say it's a bus you've created a bus right. so yeah why is yours not a bus and how do you come up with the idea of 
creating this bus startup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, I'm from New York, as are you. Go Long Island. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, the, uh, <laughs> Thank you for I'm getting from that New in. York. I, I, I worked in London for three years. So uh, when you live in New York and London, you never own a, you don't have to own a car. Uh, I've never owned a car in my life. And so when I moved to San Francisco, I had the luxury of a uh, mission to Soma commute. It was flat. There was a bike lane. And I biked to work every day. Um, but a lot of people did not have that luxury. And, and I still took the bus around. And it was a, it was a pretty suboptimal experience. So uh, I was in the marina one day and having breakfast. And I saw uh, people being left by the bus. The bus wouldn't even stop on Chestnut Street because um, it was too full. I mean, people at 8 in the morning were being left, uh, left stranded. And so I, I said, uh, oh, this must just be today. So I started, I introduced myself to some of these would-be passengers, and uh, they, uh, they said it happens every day, twice a day. It happens in their old neighborhood. Um, it'll probably happen in the next neighborhood they live in. So in, in other words, um, there was more demand for mass transit services than supply. So I said, uh, why not deploy some vans on the street? I've seen this concept in Mexico and Russia and Israel. Uh, uh, they're, they're called Flatbush something Avenue else. in yeah. Brooklyn. Yeah, dollar yeah. vans in Brooklyn right. and Queens. And, um, and so long story short, uh, put four, you know, it took seven weeks to put four vans on the street, drivers uh, hustling people on the street, get them get into, into the chariots as opposed to the bus. And lo and behold, we, um, we started getting all of this uh, feedback from around the city and around the country, uh, can Chariot serve my neighborhood? Mm -hmm. And then we started crowdsourcing routes from there, and the rest is history. And you picked a good name. I mean, Chariot yeah. is like, you made a van sound cool. <laughs> yeah, don't call them vans, they're I Chariots. Well, let's be honest, <laughs> we know what they are. All right. <laughs> chariot it is. What, how much time do we have? We got a few minutes for a couple questions. Okay, let's take a question, and then we'll do a lightning round. Does so anyone have a question, or should I just go into the lightning round? Question over here. Uh, hi, Ali. Uh, what, was your, what was your path to exit? Can you describe it a little bit? Uh, path to exit, we, we, didn't, um, we didn't go into our Series A fundraising wanting to sell the company. We, we started fundraising 2016 uh, in January for our Series A um, after raising a seed and going through Y Combinator. Uh, and then three car companies actually approached us, which, which surprised me. Uh, a French company, Toyota and Ford. And um, what I didn't realize at the time was Ford uh, was trying to build a, a chariot of their own in Dearborn, Michigan. And they saw what we were doing, and, um, and uh, we, we had very early success on a shoestring budget. And uh, uh, after they looked under the hood, no, no pun intended, they, uh, they definitely said, used that line before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They, um, they said, this is something we, we want to make a cornerstone of our mobility platform. Uh, and so we moved quickly from investments to uh, acquisition discussion. Let's do a lightning round. Yeah. All okay. right. This is okay. unscripted. Let's do one question here, then we do the lightning round. Uh, wait, 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 wait for the mic. There you go. You talked about. Um, some kind of shared infrastructure where multiple network providers could communicate with one another and kind of find a way to commercialize it and um, make it more of a scalable solution. Uh, recently, I heard, I think it was more of a, last November, there was a data conference somewhere. I heard a Toyota autonomous uh, car designer talk about how Toyota was considering giving up their plans uh, altogether for completely autonomous solution versus going for more of a assisted co-driving solution. Does that kind of hint there? I mean, uh, a company as big as Toyota publicly saying that we are giving up the plans of completely autonomous car solution versus let's get all the manufacturers together and create something which talks to one another and makes drivers more um, aware of the circumstances around. Do you think it's talking about the similar thing which you're alluding, which is a common infrastructure? I know it's a long question. Yeah, um, the common infrastructure is going to be, uh, is going to be very difficult. Um, so imagine if uh, California is using a certain network provider uh, 
and uh, that, that car is driving to uh, uh, you know, Oregon, um, and Oregon is using a different uh, network provider from some local Oregon company. I don't know how that gets solved right now, but um, it would be a shame if uh, there was one monolithic company that uh, ruled the entire national network. Uh, I don't think that'll be the case. I think uh, the government will step in in that case, in, in that instance. Um, so ultimately, you'll have these network providers actually speaking with each other, much like AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile do today. This is where you say you're going to put it on the blockchain, and then someone's going to yeah, cut you a yeah. $200 million with your, check. With your crypto okay. credit card. We're going we're gonna to just do the lightning round, then we're going to wrap. Okay. Okay, you ready? This is the hard questions. What is All the lightning right. round? It's, I'm going to say uh, two things, and you're going to pick one. Okay. Okay. Uber or Lyft? Chariot. <laughs> it's not an answer. Yeah. Why on, are you guys dude. encouraging this? <laughs> uh, Travis or Dara? Uh, 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 yeah, Dara is Persian, and my parents are Persian, so let's go Dara. Okay. All right. Hey, you answered one. That's great. Scooters or hoverboards? Scooters. Blockchain or AI? AI. Everybody groaned. Um, the Warriors or the Rockets? Warriors, come on. Strength in numbers. Wow, the Bay Area. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that was supposed to be a cheap applause line. OK. The Giants or the A's? The Yankees. <laughs> well, from New York. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're good. in first place. We finally got a watchable team. Unbelievable. Yankees fans are totally insufferable. <laughs> they win one game. They're like, oh, we're the best team in baseball. Uh, experiences or things? Experiences. Okay, uh, buses or chariots? Chariots, come on. Why did I write that? <laughs> okay, 2007 or 2037? 2037. All right, Ali Bob's out, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thanks, man.